Hey everybody, I'm, uh, here, I'm Dr. Goddard here with Dr. Morse today and we're here to talk about prolotherapy technique and this, um, this kind of technique has been around for nearly 100 years uh, and we're going to talk about the organization that we actually went to train with in this last weekend. Um, I've been a part of this organization for over a decade. Um, Dr. Morse, this was his first time going there. Um, so we're each just going to talk about our, our experiences from me from a, you know, being a veteran in this field, but Dr. Morris from coming from um, sports medicine training and, and learning about this field and how, how he uh, kind of integrates it and thinks about it in, in the sports medicine aspect. So um, from my perspective, you know, prolotherapy technique is the uh, idea not just to inject the injury, but to inject all the stabilizing factors around it, and that includes ligaments and soft tissue structures such as your capsule um, and then also sometimes tendons and uh, tendons get injured and we need to inject those and just for a quick example the knee is always the best way because um, a lot of people have knee problems so right here is our patella here's our femur here's our tibia there's our fibula um, a lot of times we get arthritis within this joint or meniscus tears but it's because of the ligamentous structure the mcl the lcl we have small ligaments called coronary ligaments, meniscofemoral ligaments, that surround the knee joint. And when that happens, the knee gets loose, and not only do we need to inject the knee joint for arthritis or meniscus, but we need to inject the ligaments surrounding this in order to get the best, and uh, not only best healing, but best long-term uh, effects. And if you're an athlete, in my, in my mind, it's, it's even doing it so we can get you to back to the field faster without as much risk of injury. Um, and so, like I said, I've been doing this for over a decade, you know, 12 years on my own, really. And, you know, the, the long-term effects from prolotherapy technique is, is much better than just doing a, a plain joint injection, for example, uh, for an injury. And that uh, prolotherapy technique can mean anything that uh, we currently inject, um, from dextrose to PRP to uh, stem cells, which is a generic term. But what it means is adipose or stem cell, uh, um, adipose stem cell or bone marrow from you, or amniotic um, umbilical Wharton's jelly or exosomes from somebody else. And you know, there's uh, the field of regenerative medicine keeps changing, but the technique is the key to great, great results. I'm gonna let Dr. Morris kind of explain um, his uh, his view of what he he was experiencing this past weekend. So. Traditionally, we think uh, in, in traditional sports medicine training, I thought of a joint injection, a knee injection, as you inject the main joint and it should take care of everything, hopefully. <clears throat> but if you step back and say, well, if the injury is to a separate part of the, of the joint, that it may not be... But wouldn't it be wiser if you restabilize the whole joint in addition to injecting the main part? So if you hand me the, the knee for a sec. So traditionally, if in, in, in traditional uh, ortho, you want a knee injection. Most of us are going to go on the lateral patella facet. So right here, um, uh, kind of directly into it. Or some people, will, you lay down and do it just above the kneecap. Well, that's one way to do it. But if you think about it, if you're trying to restabilize and all of these are loose, wouldn't you want to stabilize each of these so that you're actually strengthening up everything and not just hitting the main joint and hoping all of those heal or hoping they heal with physical therapy? So ideally what, you, what the, this course taught me is that each of these should be addressed specifically with the needle head so that you can actually... Uh, kind of wake these tendons up, wake these ligaments up, provide them some more stability and strength so that the whole joint has less play and as a result everything gets stronger. So and one of the things that he likes to use as a, uh, as a description um, is it, kind of think of your engine as having loose bolts so there's a lot of movement. Well, if you tighten up those bolts, you're going to have less play and, and the things that are supposed to be doing the work will actually do the work. Now I'm paraphrasing, but uh, the, the point that I learned is that if you inject the right location, 
with the right product, you're going to have a better chance of success as opposed to just taking a generalized approach and saying, well, I hope if I get it in here, it will go everywhere I want it to go. Um, in my mind, prolotherapy is almost like uh, having a big a fire in, in, in a field and you take a helicopter and you literally drop a, um, a fire engine into the heart of the fire and put it out. That's essentially what you're doing with your needle. You're going in and targeting the exact injury as well as some of the other areas that may be weaker so that you can restabilize the joint, restabilize the back, the shoulder, the foot, whatever the injury is. And at that point, you can actually start the healing. And then you start retraining the, uh, the muscles and ligaments to do what they're supposed to do in the form of physical therapy. So when you do it for just one joint, it makes sense, but now you do it for the shoulder, the, the back, the cervical spine, the foot, you know, and then you start to see this becomes a three or four day course, and then you transmit those thought processes into actual actions and uh, seeing how to put the needle in, what angle to put it in, what, how to avoid certain structures. This is something, despite all my years of training, was never really discussed. Uh, it, it was just kind of fascinating to me. <laughs> it, it, it is amazing, you know, and, you know, I think part of that is it, it just takes extra training. And, you know, once, you know, going through the training of being a doctor, it, it wears on people and, and you feel you know your field so well that, you know, why do we need to keep learning? But one thing I learned early on uh, was I always want to keep learning. If I ever say I've learned enough, then it's probably time for me to, to leave the field. But, um, and, and that's where all the, the physicians that were at and, and teach at this conference were out. And it's called the American Osteopathic Association of Prolotherapy Regenerative Medicine. And they, you know, some of these, the guys in this or, and, and ladies in this field and in this organization have been doing this for 40 years, 50 years. And to be around that knowledge um, of, of successes, of failures, and if we can in, absorb those, um, just a little bit of what they've done, then we can just get ahead of, of uh, you know, our typical, you know, us trial and error. You know, we could trial and error all day, but I'm sure you all, as a patient, you don't want us to be doing that. <laughs> so, you know, being and doing this as long as I have as well, you know, so sometimes everything's going perfect. Everybody we treat gets better, but then I'll have a 20-year-old who I can't get better, and then I have an 80-year-old who gets better after one treatment. And that's why this field is, is so tough because everybody responds differently. But I will say, like uh, Dr. Morris just said, it is very important to be injecting at the precise spot because a lot of people do, uh, let's take stem cells for example, they take stem cells, inject it like a steroid shot and expect it just to work because that's, you know, that's kind of what steroids do. That's not how it works with this field. Um, prolotherapy means that we have been trained in order to inject a very specific location, um, ligament, tendon, joint, whatever it might be, soft tissue, in order to create healing. And that injection has to be very precise. And that's what the training, these training courses do. And so, for example, last weekend, we have lectures for two straight days about the anatomy, about the mechanism of action of of the, the prolotherapy chemical substances, as well as the PRP, and then the stem cell uh, as well. And then, we, and then on the third day, we go into um, cadavers and, and go over technique injecting. We go to workshops where we use, uh, where we, uh, we learn more about how to do the proper technique in these areas. And I've been a, you know, I've been lucky to be a workshop trainer now for, you know, roughly five years. And I'm, I'm getting the, the experience of training people and seeing um, how, how I started, you know, 15 years ago doing this. Um, and, and it's just been fascinating to me to, to be able to be in this field and, and actually see people improve. And, you know, it's tough. You know, it's tough to d differentiate ourselves from other people. And that's why getting the, the training Dr. Morse has in sports medicine and from the traditional side is extremely important because, because some things we can't fix. And we've got to know our limits. Um, and those limits are, are based on data. And data is how many people have we seen in our training. And that's where I have my, my personal training. Dr. Morse has his. And, you know, we're looking forward to just implementing this technique. Because not enough, in my mind, there's not enough people doing this technique. Um, Dr. Morse, how many 
How many uh, physicians, your friends, or anybody that does this? No, I mean, um, there's probably 4,000 sports medicine trained like me, non-surgicals. Less than 5%, maybe. Maybe a little bit more than that. It's just not something that's in the realm of normal for us. It's just not discussed. It's not um, uh, brought up. It's not even, you know, mumbled. It's just like, oh, that's a different planet, and they don't even, you know, if you don't mention it to you, you don't know about it. You know, so when you hear about it, like, oh, that actually makes sense. Why haven't I been doing that all along? And then you start digging, and then you realize you put on, you, you, you have the foundational knowledge that I've accumulated, and then you add this, and it's like a beautiful chemistry uh, put together to, to, to finally figure out exactly uh, where the injury is, what the injury is, how to inject it, and then you use ultrasound or whatever modality you're using to guide that needle and make sure you don't hit anything and make sure you hit the exact uh, location of injury uh, so you're being as precise as possible so that you get the best results possible. Well, and we just want to kind of run through some of these models again because we want to kind of give you a, a really good idea of, you know, what, you know, how exactly is this different than, you know, your typical... So let's just start with the knee again, you know, real quick. You know, like he said, typical joint injection, either through here, ultrasound guided, uh, we can do it through here. But we want to hit these different ligament attachment points, whether it be the big ones, the LCL, MCL, or the meniscofemoral ligaments, the coronary ligaments. There's even patellofemoral ligaments. There's so many different types of stability structures. And really doing a great physical exam is the key to this. Um, then, you know, we have the hip. Um, hips are one of the hardest uh, areas in regenerative medicine to heal and that is mainly because of the way the angles are but it's also how we have to do and inject this a lot of people just do a joint injection right in there but if you look at all this this is all the ligamentous structure that surrounds the hip and we have to hit all sides of this ligamentous structure in order to create um, localized healing and so being able to do the joint injection and then all around this is very important to the proper technique. Show them the insertion points on the big model if you can, if yep. you can coordinate. So it's hard to appreciate where a lot of these muscles or ligaments or tendons insert onto. This model happens to actually remove all those and you can see that with the different colors where each of these are. So if you look here, uh, you can see Look at each of these. So each of this is a different muscle group that you actually want to hit. There's more on the back side. Then you go down to the leg. There's more on the back side over here. So literally going into each of these areas and tightening up that ligament or tendon is going to give you a lot more stability than if you just go whoop and hope everything heals. That's in the joint. This isn't. That medicine is not going to get here. It's just, just not. It, it, it has no way to get here. So you actually have to go here if you expect this to heal. You know, that's one of the things. You know, the cervical spine is here. Um, if you want to discuss this yeah, one. Yeah, bring that up. So this one, is, this is very common. So we have low back and neck pain, um, and, and, and they're notorious for, for causing issues. You can go spin this bad boy around, and we can you can see... Yeah how complicated this gets very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> it, it does. Um, the head doesn't quite fit in here, so I'm going to show you the low, low back. Um, like he said, these colors represent attachment points. And you can see the spine has all these different attachment points right here. And what people don't see are there's ligaments that run down the, the uh, spinous processes right here, and even in between, and even the facet joints, which are actually the number one cause of back pain. Um, they have their little ligamentous structures too. So when you have back problems, usually you've sprained these ligaments and then it creates a reactive muscle spasm. Um, so when we inject, we go right to these points and right into the ligament and right to the facets and that will stimulate regrowth of uh, the ligament on the back. And this is why backs are more difficult because in order to do it properly, you have to do usually the whole lumbar spine, the whole thoracic spine and even the whole cervical spine. Sometimes we can do localized treatments, but most of the time we need to be very, very specific. And one of the things that I do want to comment on is you've probably heard of an epidural. Uh, 
you know, uh, oh, I got an, an epidural or a steroid shot in my back and it worked. Well, the problem is it's a temporary fix because what it's doing is it's putting medicine into and numbing up the, the spinal column and decreasing the, the, the pinching. So this would be this little red thing right there. That's a herniated disc pouching out, a, you know, pushing out and hitting that. The problem is if the, your injury is at a facet joint, once that numbing wears off, that facet joint didn't change. You didn't hit it because that's not you know, inside of where that medicine is going and it's going to start bothering you again. And, you know, and, and then you do another one and you get temporary relief, but again, you're still not addressing the issue. And most people don't want surgery on their back and I don't blame them. This is the next alternative. This is the other option to go to the source, uh, directly, uh, directly address it with stuff that's actually affecting the tissue in a positive way, as opposed to just numbing up the tissue, telling it, hey, you don't have pain, but I'm not actually treating your pain, which is what a steroid shot unfortunately does. Yeah, and as a result, we regrow tissue, which stabilizes the joint and takes away your pain naturally. Um, it's not always as quick. Steroid shots can be quick sometimes and take your pain away immediately. But, you know, unfortunately ours doesn't quite work like that. Um, but, you know, if you're looking for long-term health and healing and, and activity, then, then, that's, uh, then that's what we're looking to do. So, you know, we just wanted to give you an overview. You know, first experience at a, a Prolo conference. You know, I've, I've been around one for a long time, and I've had to learn more of uh, his field that he trained in originally over the years. That way we can kind of blend as much as possible. But we want to make this clinic is, uh, is re based around prolotherapy, regenerative medicine, um, make it very specific and be good at a high level. And that way we can give you the best information. Of course, it always starts with the diagnosis, physical exam, that's the most important thing because if, if, we, if we could have the best product available uh, but if we don't inject it in the right spot you'll never get healed but um, do you have any other thoughts i mean a lot of the times we put a combination between accurate diagnosis imaging uh, and then um, product choice and then just patients wishes i mean do they need to go back to the field in two days or do they just not want to be in pain in a month or, or you know, they have a long-term goal. So you put all those together and you, you formulate a plan to, to, to potentially fix, uh, heal is a tricky word, but improve uh, the injury and ideally get it to go away completely if that's the realistic option. Yep. Well, great. Well, thanks for joining us today. Take care.